This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 56-minute mark in our countdown. We're still proceeding in an excellent manner at this time. All elements reporting in that all systems continuing to look good at this point. We're still aiming toward our planned liftoff at the start of the lunar window, 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight. A short while ago, in fact, uh, the space conduct, uh, spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin informed Spacecraft Commander Neil Armstrong that we were doing quite well. In fact, some 15 minutes ahead on some aspects of the preparation spacecraft-wise. Armstrong replied that was fine just as long as we don't launch 15 minutes early, obviously referring to the start of the window. The countdown is uh, still going well, T-minus 55 minutes, 10 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've passed the 51-minute mark in our countdown. We're now T-minus 50 minutes, 51 seconds, and counting. Apollo 11 countdown is still go at this time. All elements reporting ready at this point in the countdown. The spacecraft uh, correction the test supervisor, Bill Schick, has advised all hands here in the control center and uh, the spacecraft checkout people. Then in about 30 seconds, that big swing arm that has been attached to the spacecraft up to now will be moved back to a park position some five feet away from the spacecraft. We alert the astronauts because there is a little jolt when the swing arm is moved away. It will remain in that position some five feet away from the spacecraft until the five-minute mark and the count when it's completely pulled back to its retracted position. It's coming up now in five seconds. The swing arm will come back. Mark. The swing arm now coming back from the spacecraft. Countdown proceeding satisfactorily. We've completed our telemetry checks with the launch vehicle. And at this point, with the swing arm back, we arm the pyrotechnics so that escape tower atop the astronauts, atop their spacecraft, could be used if a ca catastrophic condition was going to occur under them with the launch vehicle from this point on down in the countdown. We have the high-speed elevator located at the 320-foot level in the event the astronauts have to get out in a hurry. This is a pre special precaution. Uh, one of the members of the support team for Apollo 11, astronaut Bill Pogue, is here in the firing room. He acts as the capsule communicator during the countdown. His call sign is Stoney. He controls that elevator. He now has it locked at the 320-foot level. These are special precautions for safety purposes during the final phase of the count. Now coming up on the 49-minute mark in the countdown, this is Kennedy Launch Control.
as Apollo sat on launch control. We passed the 46 minute mark in our countdown. T minus 45 minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. All elements still go in the countdown at this time. The hard worker in the spacecraft at this point in the countdown, astronaut Buzz Aldrin in the middle seat. He's been uh, working with the spacecraft test conductor on setting up proper switch settings in preparation for pressurizing their reaction control system. These are these uh, big thrusters on the side of the service module. There's actually 16 of them in four quadrants around the service module. They are used for maneuvers in space. We pressurize that system before liftoff. Uh, that uh, particular operation will be coming up in some five minutes or so. In preparation for it, Buzz Aldrin, who has most of the switches uh, in front of him, has been uh, preparing for that particular event. The launch vehicle people keeping an eye on the status of the various propellants aboard the Saturn V launch vehicle. Just at liftoff, uh, we will have a vehicle weighing close to six and a half million pounds on the launch pad. There's more than a million gallons of uh, propellants aboard the three stages of Saturn V. The reports here in the control center are the propellants are stable. We did take a look a little while ago at the RP-1, the high-grade high kerosene fuel that's used in the first stage of the Saturn V to make sure it was at its proper level. We keep an eye on these various aspects uh, throughout the count and use the aid of computers uh, to keep an overall look on general status. We're now at T-minus 44 minutes, 21 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the 41 minute mark in our count. T minus 40 minutes, 53 seconds, and counting. We are continuing, and we're continuing very excellently at this time. There are no problems that have been reported in as the countdown uh, continues to click down. We're still aiming for the start of our window on this, the first flight to land men on the moon. Our, we're aiming toward our planned liftoff time of 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Coming up shortly will be a key test here in the firing room as far as the launch vehicle people are concerned. It's a, some final checks of the destruct system aboard the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. In the event uh, during powered flight that the vehicle strayed rather violently off course, uh, the range safety officer could take action to destroy the vehicle. This obviously would occur after the astronauts were separated by their escape tower from the faulty vehicle. We make a check of the destruct system to assure that if a signal is required to get through, that in fact it will. This is what is coming up here in the control center at this time. All aspects of the mission still go. We're at T-minus 39 minutes, 47 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the 36-minute mark in our countdown. T-minus 35 minutes, 48 seconds, and counting. We've completed those range safety command checks, all still going well with the countdown. A short while ago, spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin asked uh, Neil Armstrong if the crew was comfortable up there. And uh, Neil reported back. He said, it's, we're very comfortable. It's very nice this morning. For a status report, we'll now switch to Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Mission Control. Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth's team is on station here in the Mission Operations Control Room, ready to assume the control of this flight at tower clearance. There is a possibility that Apollo 11 will check out the command module color TV camera during the first Earth revolution while in contact with the Goldstone Station. If this checkout does occur, we, we acquire Goldstone at 1 hour 29 minutes elapsed time. We have a loss of signal at 1 hour 33 minutes 50 seconds elapsed time. This TV camera checkout is a possibility. This is Mission Control Houston.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 31-minute mark in our count, with T-minus 30 minutes, 52 seconds and counting, aiming toward our planned liftoff time of 32 minutes past the hour, the start of our launch window on this the mission to land men on the moon. The countdown is still proceeding very satisfactorily at this time. We've just got by an important test with the launch vehicle, checking out the various batteries in the three stages and instrument unit of the Saturn V. We remain on external power through most of the count to preserve those batteries which must be used during the powered flight. We've just taken a look at them by going internal and then switching back to external again. The batteries all look good. The next time we go internal will be at the 50-second mark with those batteries, and they will remain, of course, on internal power during the flight. The lunar module, which has been rather inactive during these latter phases of the count, also is going on internal power at this time on the two batteries in the ascent stage and the four batteries of the descent stage. For the next 20 minutes, we'll take a look at some systems in the lunar module, then power down at about the 10-minute mark in the, in the count, power down uh, the telemetry to uh, preserve the uh, power of the limb. The lunar module in Apollo 11, of course, when it separates from the command module in lunar orbit, will have the call sign Eagle. The command module call sign, once the two vehicles separate, will be Columbia. Both Columbia and Eagle are go at this time at 29 minutes, 24 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 26-minute mark in the count. T-minus 25 minutes, 53 seconds and counting. Still proceeding very satisfactorily. At this time, uh, spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin working with astronaut Buzz Aldrin in the middle seat, uh, covering the final pressurization of the reaction control system for the spacecraft. These are those uh, big thrusters on the side of the service module that are used for maneuvers in space. Each one of these thrusters is capable of 100 pounds of thrust. There are 16 of them loaded, located in four quadrants around the service module. We pressurize the system with helium uh, prior to launch to make sure that all will be in readiness for use in space. The countdown still proceeding satisfactorily. It picked up uh, at the T-minus 9 hour mark at 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight last evening. We've just had two comparatively minor problems uh, since that time. The major portion of uh, the countdown uh, during the early morning hours, some five hours of work was taken to load the various propellants aboard the stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. As we came into the count this morning, we did already have uh, the fuel aboard the first stage, but it was necessary to bring the liquid oxygen aboard all three stages and the liquid hydrogen fuel aboard the second and third stages. Uh, close to uh, three-quarters of a million gallons of propellants were loaded during these five hours. Following uh, that, the astronauts, the prime crew, were awakened at 4.15 a.m. Eastern Daylight as planned in their countdown and proceeded to uh, have a physical examination in which they were declared flight ready. They sat down for the normal astronaut fair on launch day as far as breakfast is concerned, orange juice, steak, scrambled eggs, toast, and coffee. The three uh, pilots were joined by two of their colleagues at breakfast, uh, Director of Flight Crew Operations, Deke Slayton, and the backup command module pilot, Bill Anders, who uh, has been uh, named uh, the Executive Secretary of the National Aeronautics and Space Council. The astronauts departed from their crew quarters. Uh, after checking out their suits, they departed from the crew quarters at 6.27 a.m., and some 27 minutes later, eight miles away from the crew quarters at the Kennedy Space Center, atop the launch pad at Complex 39, 6.54 a.m., the commander, astronaut Neil Armstrong, was the first to board the spacecraft. He was uh, followed about five minutes later by Mike Collins, and finally Buzz Aldrin, the man who was sitting in the middle seat uh, during liftoff, was the third astronaut to come aboard. Two minor problems have been encountered during the count. Early in the count, a malfunction light came on here in the control center, indicating that we might have a communication problem at the launch pad. Nothing to do with the spacecraft, but it indicated we possibly might not be able to talk to some uh, key technicians we had at the pad. Uh, the problem turned out to be very minor. A simple adjustment of some equipment beneath the pad uh, remedied the problem. There was no, uh, in fact, no equipment problem involved. The second problem, we did encounter a leaky valve in part of the equipment that's used to replenish the hydrogen fuel supply on the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. A team of technicians were sent out to the launch pad at about the time the astronauts were traveling to the pad. They tightened some bolts and uh, we were able to bypass this valve and uh, proceed with our countdown. The weather is uh, certainly go. It's a beautiful morning for a launch to the moon. We expect a temperature of about 85 degrees in the Kennedy Space Center area. The wind's about 10 miles, 10 knots rather, from the southeast. And uh, the weather conditions and the round-the-world track, according to reports from the Manned Space Flight Meteorology Group, indicate all weather conditions are acceptable for launch. That's our general status. We've just passed the 22-minute mark in the count. 21 minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're now less than 16 minutes away from the planned liftoff of the Apollo 11 space vehicle. All still going well with the countdown at this time. The astronauts aboard the spacecraft have had a little chance to rest over the last few minutes or so. At least they haven't been uh, busy with procedures with the spacecraft test conductor. In the meantime, we have been uh, performing final checks on the tracking beacons in the instrument unit, which is used as the guidance system during the powered phase of flight. Once we get down to the three minute and 10 second mark in the countdown, we'll go on an automatic sequence. As far as the launch vehicle is concerned, all aspects from there on down will be automatic, run by the ground master computer here in the firing room. This will lead up to the 8.9 minute mark in the countdown when the ignition sequence will begin in those five engines of the first stage, the S1C stage of the Saturn V. At the two-second mark, we'll get uh, information and a signal that all engines are running. And at the zero mark in the countdown, once we get the commit signal, the signal that says that the thrust is proper and acceptable, we then will get a commit and lift off as the hold-down arms release the vehicle. We have some 7.6 million pounds of thrust pushing the vehicle upward, a vehicle that weighs uh, close to 6.5 million pounds. We're now 14 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've passed the 11-minute mark. Now T-minus 10 minutes, 54 seconds on our countdown for Apollo 11. All still go at this time. The astronauts in the spacecraft busy again. The commander, Neil Armstrong, has uh, performed some final uh, switch settings for the stabilization and control system of the spacecraft. The spacecraft also now is on full internal power. This came shortly after the 15-minute mark. The spacecraft now on the full power of its fuel cells. Up to this time, it had been sharing the load with an external power source. Both Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have armed their rotational hand controllers, the controllers they use in flight. And we have now gone to the automatic system with the emergency detection system, that system that would uh, cue the astronauts uh, if there's trouble down below with the Saturn V rocket during the powered flight. We're now coming up on the 10-minute mark, 10 minutes away from our planned liftoff. Mark, T-minus 10 minutes and counting, T-minus 10. We're aiming for our planned liftoff at 32 minutes past the hour. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the six-minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11. Now five minutes, 52 seconds and counting. We're on time at the present time for our planned liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now has completed the status check of his personnel in the control room. All report they are go for the mission, and this has been reported to the test supervisor, Bill Schick. The test supervisor are now going through some status checks. Launch operations manager Paul Donner reports go for launch. Launch director Rocco Patron now gives a go with five minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Coming up shortly, that swing arm up at the spacecraft level will come back to its fully retracted position. This should occur at the five-minute mark in the count. In the meantime, the lunar module tele telemetry has been powered down. We took a good look at Eagle, and it looks good. The spacecraft test conductor for the lunar module reported that Eagle was go. The swing arm now coming back to its fully retracted position as our countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 50 seconds, and counting. Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm now coming back. The astronauts will have a few more reports coming up in the countdown. The last business report will be from Neil Armstrong at the 45-second mark in the count when he gives a status on the final alignment of the stabilization and control system. We're now passing the 4-minute, 30-second mark in the countdown. Still go at this time. Four minutes, 15 seconds, the test supervisor now has informed launch vehicle test conductor Norm Carlson, you are go, go for launch. From this time down, uh, Carlson uh, handles the countdown as the launch vehicle uh, begins to build up. We're now hitting the four minute mark. Four, minute mar four minutes and counting, we are go for Apollo 11. We'll go on an automatic sequence uh, starting at three minutes and seven seconds. Three minutes, 45 seconds and counting. And the final uh, abort checks between uh, several key members of the crew here in the control center and the astronauts. Launch operations manager Paul Donnelly wished the crew on the launch team's behalf good luck and Godspeed. Three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. We're still go at this time. We'll be coming up on the automatic sequence about uh, 10 or 15 seconds from this time. All still go at this time. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Firing command coming in now. We are on the automatic sequence. We're approaching the three-minute mark in the count. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three. We are go with all elements of the mission at this time. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. The members of the launch team here in the control center monitoring a number of what we call red line values. These are tolerances we don't want to go above and below in temperatures and pressures. They're standing by to call out any deviations from our plans. Two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. We're still go on Apollo 11 at this time. The vehicle starting to pressurize as far as the propellant tanks are concerned and all is still go as we monitor our status for it. Two minutes, 10 seconds and counting. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We've just passed the two minute mark in the countdown. T minus one minute, 54 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the Oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for a liftoff. T minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates the third stage completely pressurized. 80-second mark has now been passed. We'll go on full internal power at the 50-second mark in the countdown. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60-second mark on the Apollo 11 mission. T 
T-minus, 60 seconds and counting. We passed T-minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back. It's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50-second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on proper heading. seconds. Roll is complete and the pitch is programming. One Bravo. One Bravo is a abort control mode. Altitude's two miles. Houston, you're good at one minute. Downrange one mile, altitude three, four miles now. Got Velocity 2,195 feet per second. Uh, start model pressure red line is lit. I don't... Where? Yeah, it don't make a difference. No difference. Okay, let's punch them out. Everything is go, Ralph. We're through the region of maximum dynamic pressure now. Yeah, everything looks good here. We're at 1350 on the start bar. Set eight miles downrange, 12 miles high. Velocity, 4,000 feet per second. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mode one, Charlie. One, Charlie. Cliff Charlesworth taking a staging status. This is Houston. You are go for staging. Inboard cutoff. Inboard engines out. Come inboard cutoff. Downrange 35 miles, 30 miles high. Standing by for the outboard engine cut down now. Staging. And ignition. S4B is go. 11 Houston, thrust is go. All engines, you're looking good. Hi, right, Roger. You're loud and clear, Houston. At three minutes, downrange 70 miles, 43 miles high, velocity 9,300 yeah. feet per second. We got skirt step. Roger, we confirm skirt step. Tower's gone. Roger, tower. Neil Armstrong confirming both the engine skirt separation and the launch escape tower separation. Houston, be advised the visual is go today. <laughs> 